Hi, I'm Sarah Baya and welcome to my science class. Welcome to another fun and interesting lesson this week. In today's lesson, we will be tracing and describing the importance of water cycle. At the end of our lesson, you are expected to define, discuss, describe, and explain the importance of water cycle. But before we proceed with our main topic, let us review about the importance of water. So if you're ready, let's get started! If you answered them all correctly, congratulations! As a safety reminder, always be careful in handling materials. Perform the activities carefully so you will not harm yourself. Always perform the activity in the presence of an adult. Pour yourself a glass of water and take a sip. Did you know that the water you just swallowed is the same water that woolly mammoths, King Tutankhamun, and the first humans drank? That's because Earth has been recycling water for over 4 billion years. Earth's water is always in movement, and the natural water cycle describes the continuous movement of water on, above, and below the surface of the earth. Water is always changing states between liquid, vapor, and ice. These processes are happening in the blink of an eye and over millions of years. So let's learn some splashing news facts about the different stages of the wonderful water cycle. Water cycle is the process of water moving around between the air and land in continuous process. Water cycle involves four processes, evaporation, condensation, precipitation, and collection. If you spill a glass of water outside, you will notice that a few hours later, the water is gone. That is because water slowly turns from liquid into gas called water vapor. The process of water turning from liquid into gas is called evaporation. Energy from the sun heats up the surface of the earth, causing the temperature of the water in our rivers lakes and oceans to rise. Evaporation happens faster on a hot day. That is because the evaporation of water outside is powered by the sun. The hotter it is outside, the faster water will evaporate. Since water in its gas form has no color, we cannot see it. It just goes into the air. Water vapor rises up in the sky due to the sun's heat. 
Once the water vapor rises high enough, it condenses into water droplets. Condensation is the process of water turning from gas into a liquid. You have probably experienced condensation if you had a cold glass of water at a restaurant. As the cold glass sits on the table, water vapor from the air condenses into water droplets on the glass. The same thing happens as water vapor rises into the sky and turns it into liquid water. It is important to remember that not all water condenses to form clouds. Some of it condenses close to the ground to form dew and some of it rises up only a little bit to form fog. But most of it rises high in the sky to form clouds. Clouds are made of tiny water droplets, billions and billions of them. When water droplets get heavy enough, they fall back down to earth as rain. We call this precipitation because it can happen in a few different ways like rain, snow, and hail. Precipitation brings the water back down to earth and the cycle repeats. Collection process is when water that falls from the clouds as rain, snow, or hail collects in the oceans, rivers, lakes, and streams. Most will infiltrate the ground and will collect as underground water. And the cycle repeats. The sun shines on the water and it starts evaporating again. This is why we call it the water cycle. The water cycle involves the exchange of energy, which leads to temperature changes. When water evaporates, it takes up energy from its surroundings and cools the environment. When it condenses, it releases energy and warms the environment. This heat exchange influences climate. The evaporative phase of the cycle purifies water which then replenishes the land with fresh water. The flow of liquid water and ice transports minerals across the globe. It is also involved in reshaping the geological features of the earth. Though processes include erosion and sedimentation, the water cycle is also essential for the maintenance of most life and ecosystems on the planet. Our topic for today is water cycle. The sun heats up the water from oceans, lakes and rivers and water changes into water vapor by the process of evaporation. Hmm. Plants also lose water in the form of water vapor from their leaves into the air by the process of transpiration. As the water vapor rises up into the air, it starts cooling down and forms tiny water droplets. These water droplets come together to form clouds. This process is called condensation. When the clouds start getting heavy, and cannot hold the water droplets anymore, they fall back to the earth in the form of rain, uh -huh. hail or snow. This process is called precipitation. Some of the water 
that falls on the earth seeps into the ground. This water is available to us in the form of ground water. The remaining water falls back into oceans, lakes, rivers and seas. This process is called collection. Then the sun starts heating up this water once again. This circulation of water is called water cycle. And now, time for some challenge. Our challenge for today is identifying the word with each definition by choosing the best letter of the correct answer. So if you're ready, let's get started. If you answer them all correctly, congratulations! We have learned that water cycle is a very important process here on Earth. Without it, our water supply and climate will be greatly affected. So that's it for our lesson today. Don't forget to read more about our lesson in your textbook and module and answer the activities in your worksheets. Once again, I'm your teacher, Sir Abaya. Thanks for listening and see you next time. That's all for today. See you next time.